All right, this is digital art for fall 2021. We're gonna do our first exercise. And this exercise is a pass fail. You either meet all the requirements, you meet some of the requirements, or you don't meet any of the requirements. So you can score zero points, one point, or two points. But there is no extra grade needed for how well you do it. But of course, we are artists, we are working on our craft, you want to make this as engaging and as fulfilling as possible. And my job is to just introduce you to the concepts and the tools at this point for this first exercise. For this first exercise, we are getting introduced to compositing, which is using raster images, which are pixel-based images, and layering them on top of each other. What we are not allowed to do in this assignment is to create our own pixels. We are only going to composite using other people's pixels that we find online. And the software we're going to use to layer them on top of each other and modify them is photop.com, which is an online equivalent to Adobe Photoshop. Once we return to our lab uh, with public, when, when that's in the public health, then we'll also have the option to use the Adobe Photoshop that's on our lab computers. And if you have Adobe Photoshop on your own, you're always welcome to use that as well. But it is very helpful to know that PhotoP is a free option that, that maps very closely to Photoshop's functionality. So what are we gonna learn? We're gonna review the basics of raster compositing. We're gonna learn what using pixels is like, understanding resolution, understanding sizing, understanding layers. We're going to find our images through appropriate resources, whether it's through pixabay.com, which is a Creative Commons uh, search engine, or Google Images. But Google Images has some pitfalls we want to be aware of. We're going to become familiar with layer blending modes, things like multiply mode, pin light, dissolve, all the different options we have for blending layers together. And we're going to learn about selecting parts of found images using the magic wand. And then most importantly, we're going to understand how to organize, change the order, and move selections between layers in raster imaging. To do this, we're going to look at some past instructor and student examples. We're going to have the option of reviewing the tutorial demos, just like this one I'm recording now through our, our public NLC Arts Lab YouTube page. And then you're going to create your own exercise one, which I am calling a line art jumble. And that is what you are expected to deliver. It is due next class. So you have between now and next class to work on it. Each unit will have an introductory page like that going through what's expected. So what is a line art jumble? In its most basic form, it takes line art that we find online, piles it together to create an original composition. You are required to use at least five different sources of line art to make your one composition. We can see more examples. on our Imgur page. And the theme of these recent examples has been an illustration of a banned book. And that's the theme we're gonna continue this semester. In other semesters, we would do it with certain cartoons. What you are looking at are all student examples. And then here are some instructor examples. Again, we are not creating any of the pixels ourselves directly. Instead, we are layering up found images. It'd be the same if we were using photographs, but for this, we're using line art. So for our band book theme, line art jumble, the theme we want to follow is going to be based 
on your selection of a banned book. So banned books are books that receive complaints and have been pulled off of library shelves across the United States due to public objection. And usually it's, it's because that there is some content in the text that is controversial. And it's surprising how many books are on this list, including things like To Kill a Mockingbird, The Lord of the Rings, uh, the Harry Potter series. And it can be interesting to research, which is easy to do, why a certain title has been banned. The Bible. Once you have picked your banned book, you are going to use Google AutoDraw, which I'll open here, which works very well on either the Chrome or Firefox browser, and will also open up Pixabay, our Creative Commons search. And you're going to think of imagery that you can, like relevant imagery that you can layer together to illustrate your banned book. So if it's Lord of the Rings, it might be a ring, an axe, a sword, a tower, whatever, a, a golden eagle, different things you think relate. So for this semester, for the band book, I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab. And I'm going to do an image search of band, which is how I, sorry. So what is supposed to happen when you go to Google AutoDraw is when you click on the magic pencil and you draw something like a tree. You know, this looks more like a leaf. Try to look at, make it look more tree-like. Then immediately on the top, a bunch of options, AutoDraw options will appear. And so Though you are drawing your image, what you want to see are the, the automated clip art that Google has provided for you. And it's a shame it's not working because I found some really good ones. Let me see if it will work in another browser. And this happened to me last semester as well, just for some reason with, with my, the school laptop the way it's configured is somehow difficult for auto draw. This will probably be a hand. There we go. All right, so it's working for me in Firefox. So I can show it to you. This is one option. But if, like me, you have trouble getting a Google Auto Draw to work, don't worry about it. There are other options for finding line art. But if I knew I wanted trees, I could just draw a basic tree. Doesn't need to be very good. As you can see, I'm just using a trackpad. And it will give me a lot of options. So did I mean a feather? No. Did I mean a hand? No. A leaf? No. Ah, but... Eventually, ah, it will give me options for trees. I think, oh, what kind of tree am I thinking of? Maybe something like this. It's pretty easy to use. You can modify the images, you know, make them thinner, stretch them, make them bigger or smaller. You can rotate them. And so if that's a tree resource that I might want to use, I am now going to make a screen grab of it. So I have, it's going to be very important for you to be able to do screen grabs just for quick mock-ups of digital artwork. And we're doing something made for screen resolution today. So screen resolution and screen grabs are a high enough resolution. And we're going to be talking about that. 
So for a screen grab on a Mac, I'm going to press Command, Shift, and 4. That's going to give me a targeted screen grab. And then I can click and drag to create a box. And when I let go, it will grab that screen, whatever I've drawn. So I'm going to go ahead and make this tree in Firefox as large as I can within my recording window. I can zoom in by using Command Plus on my browser. Now these are Creative Commons open uh, resources that Google has paid for and just basically made free for everyone to use. So I have a screen grab of it and that's gonna be saved to my desktop. Next, I'm gonna find another element and draw that. So a speech bubble. Sure enough. And if I wanna modify that, maybe squeeze it a little bit, that's good. Now I want a screen grab of that. So Command Shift 4 because I'm on a Mac. To do a targeted screen grab. Command Shift 3 will just immediately take a picture of the whole screen, which is very similar to how print screen works on a PC. So if you're on a PC, you just want to do your print screen function. And you might have a, a functionality key on your keyboard, but it's good for you, whatever your device to research how to make a screen grab. And we can always crop it down later in PhotoP to get what you want. Just make your image as large as you can on the screen. Next, maybe some other speech bubbles. I'm thinking I'm gonna use speech bubbles kind of layered up as the leaves of the tree. To talk about having a voice, you can also flip them horizontal to vertical, should you want, before taking your screen grab. So this is using auto draw. Then I'm going to go to the select. I'm going to delete them each time so I can have a clean image. It doesn't matter if it's blue or red or black. We're going to turn them all to black within our image editing software. That's a good skill to have. Next, I want something that looks kind of like a dead tree something without branches. So they have cacti. You can see the different styles of line art that they give you. It's interesting, all the different options. And the reason it's fun to have a theme, even though we're just getting introduced to some basic concepts here, is it makes us think about an audience and what we want to communicate. So there's something about a cactus that I think relates to the content for me. But then also, of course, when we're talking about sexual assault, we're talking about identity. We're talking about a person and that it happens more to women than to men, though it does happen to men. Maybe you wanna use a figure. <laughs> and it is humbling to try to draw with a trackpad on this program, which is why we're not gonna use our own pixels. We're going to use the clip art that they provide.